if you're not with me, then you're my enemy. The Star Wars prequels have many problems, and you all know what they are because sadly this trilogy has just become associated with disappointment now. It's like 1977, I haven't felt this since 1977. To date this video, it's been a decade since the last live action Star Wars film, and even today, 10 years later, people continue to attack these prequels alongside the large majority of the Star Wars following, and believing that the newer trilogy has tainted the UNDENIABLE GREATNESS of the originals. And they've got every right to think that. I mean, from a critical standpoint, the originals are clearly better films, which is one of the many reasons why Disney's been suppressing prequel era material from Lucasfilm, because they want the majority of the Star Wars following to trust their handling with their newly acquired franchise, and they don't want their audience to be drawn away by something that they don't like. It seems like 99% of Star Wars fans hate these movies still, to this very day. I'm that 1%. Do I think all the prequels are great? Do I think all the prequels go in the, the Oscar? No, that is not the truth. Not, that is a no. As with the rest of the Star Wars storyline, there's an overall major underlying theme in these films that could be found just through watching them. And I'm surprised not that many people have noticed this theme before in the originals and especially in the prequels. Though I can understand why a person may not pick up on it in the prequels, most likely because you're being distracted by everything that's going on and the film's direction and having the film's crew being comprised of entirely yes men. That's great. It's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. Sadly, many unnecessary focuses in the prequels distract from the overall narrative told in this trilogy, which weakens the films and turns many people away from even attempting to see them. And Natalie Bortman, God, I love you, but your character falls victim to this unnecessary focus too. Padme does present an important factor in Anakin turning to the dark side, but she isn't the main reason he turns as she's directed in the prequels. She's the straw that breaks the camel's back in the story, not the massive load that was already there before, which is the Jedi Order and the Jedi Code. And are you guys ready to take some notes? Cause, oh boy, it's a lot of information. The Jedi Code was the philosophy practiced by the Jedi which forbade love, passion, fear, hate, sadness, and most natural emotions that people feel or, all the time. The code is normally seen as a cheap plot device thrown in by Lucas to give Padme and Anakin that forbidden love complex in Attack of the Clones. I don't like sand. And while that does make a lot of sense, the Jedi Code really does mean so much more. And in order to be seen as a Jedi in the eyes of the Council, you have to follow the Jedi Code, or you're just not considered a Jedi. And that fact's a little strange because not many Jedi actually follow the Jedi Code. And in saying that, I'm not saying the Jedi are evil, because they're not. I'm calling the Jedi that say that they're following the Code hypocrites, that's all. The best example of how the Jedi bend the one defining Jedi Code to get their way is hands down Mace Windu. While he does learn later that Palpatine is Darth Sidious, Mace Windu orders Anakin to spy on the Chancellor not because he's doing illegal things, but because he's taking rights away from the Jedi Council. By a democratic vote, Palpatine gains more and more power until he becomes the Senate in his own words. But that was their choice, that was the choice of the Republic Senate. Mace Windu, along with the rest of the Jedi Council, wants the Jedi to maintain their power in the Republic. They've already been turned from quote-unquote peacekeepers to war generals, and Windu wants nothing more but to maintain the Council's status in the government. He fears that Palpatine will take this away from him in the Council, so Windu plans to forcefully remove the Chancellor from office once the war is over, even though Palpatine has agreed to stepping down himself once Grievous has been killed. If the Chancellor doesn't end this war after the destruction of General Grievous, he should be removed from office. Arrested. To a dark place this line of thought will carry us. Mm. Great care we must take. And when he learns from Anakin that Palpatine is possibly the Sith Lord, he looks for no more evidence and immediately plans to kill the Chancellor. When the Jedi arrive, Palpatine asks if Grievous has been killed. No response is given by Windu or anyone else until they place him under arrest. Look at this from Windu's point of view. He has no evidence but Anakin's word, a person he barely trusts, and while he could question the Chancellor, he immediately places him under arrest. The Jedi are caught off guard and murdered, and while Windu does plan to place him in custody, Sidious attacks him again, giving Windu his own justification to murder Palpatine without a fair trial. Then Windu claims he's too dangerous to be kept alive to Anakin, which was something that Palpatine himself told Anakin after he killed Count Dooku. He's too dangerous to be left alive. He was too dangerous to be kept alive. Anakin tells Windu that this isn't right, but since Anakin isn't respected by Windu or the Jedi Council, Windu goes in for the kill anyway. This breaks the there is no ignorance, there is knowledge portion of the Jedi Code. He doesn't acknowledge the fact that Anakin is right in this sense, and that he should have a trial. He also exhibits anger in that he's witnessed his fellow Jedi Masters murdered right beside him, and I'd even say that Windu hates Palpatine because he's done so many things impeding the Jedi's prevalence in the Order of the Republic, plus all the other reasons that I've already stated. 
So what am I trying to prove here about the Jedi Code itself? Because the purpose of me talking here isn't to tell you that Mace Windu's a jerk, even though that's kind of what that last section was. I'm here to explain why the Jedi Code is so important to the rest of the Star Wars saga. Let's go back to little Annie. The only person the prequels focus on breaking the Jedi Code is Anakin, which can either make or break discovering why the Jedi act the way they do in the prequels depending on your point of view. Either we see Anakin turn evil entirely because of his personal attachments, or we could see him in the way that the story intends us to. Luke and Anakin had very little prior knowledge about the Force and what it is before it was introduced to them by their masters, and though they are given very different explanations about the Force, they both disobey their superiors and act in unconventional ways in the eyes of their masters, doubting the correctness of the way the Force is being taught to them. However, in Anakin's time of being a Jedi, he held up to great standards because he's believed to be the Chosen One who will destroy the Sith and bring balance to the Force as it stated in the Jedi's prophecy. That on top of his illegal marriage to Padme and the death of his mother that he abandoned for this life as a Jedi, his personality gets the better of him. And when he witnesses people like Mace Windu break the one code that was held so highly for him to follow, he doubts that the Jedi path is the right path to be following. You will not take her from me! Your anger and your lust for power have already done that. Don't lecture me, Obi-Wan. I see through the lies of the Jedi. Anakin, Chancellor Palpatine is evil! From my point of view, the Jedi are evil! While it is blatantly written, that's just it. From his point of view, the Jedi are a corrupt society that have become the very thing that they've sworn to destroy. So when Obi-Wan accuses Anakin of that exact statement on Mustafar, that only seals his fate in joining the dark side. But let's talk about Luke. Luke Skywalker grew up during the Galactic Civil War after the presence of the Jedi was nearly brought to extinction by the New Empire formed by Sidious and Darth Vader during the Great Jedi Purge. While the Purge was being carried out, the Senate was soon convinced that the Jedi were evil and were planning to murder the Chancellor for their own centralized control of the Republic. Very few of the Jedi survived this genocide, but the only survivors shown in Revenge of the Sith were Yoda and Obi-Wan. These two Jedi have non-traditional points of view on the Force and the Jedi Code, and this is seen all throughout the prequels for Obi-Wan and several times in Episode 3 for Yoda. So when Obi-Wan tells Luke about the ways of the Force, he tells him his own vision of the Force, which is all Luke really needs to know. Because in the end, Obi-Wan wants Luke to kill Vader and have the good of the Jedi return to the galaxy. So later, Luke undergoes intensive Jedi training by Yoda and is taught about the Jedi way of life that he must follow in order to save the galaxy, only problem being, of course, that Luke doesn't understand what Yoda and Obi-Wan are trying to teach him. If it be Obi-Wan's apprentice, Vader, is the dark side stronger? No, no, but the busy are more seductive. But how am I to know the good side from the bad? You will know when you are calm, at peace. Passive, a Jedi uses the force for knowledge and defense. Never attack. But tell me why I can't- No, no, there is no why. <sighs> Nothing more will I teach you today. Clear your mind of questions. He also doesn't understand his master's reason for abandoning his friends when he believes saving them is undoubtedly the right thing to do. So Luke leaves Dagobah, arrives on Bespin, and learns that Vader didn't kill his father, but he in fact is his father. No! Fast forward to Return of the Jedi, and Luke acknowledges learning that Obi-Wan and Yoda were keeping information from Luke to keep him encouraged to kill Darth Vader. Luke believes that he can turn his father away from the dark side, though both Obi-Wan and Yoda believe this is an impossible task considering they tried it themselves in the past only to worsen things for them. They believe that this will either cost Luke his life or he may be turned to the dark side like his father considering how they are very similar. But Luke tries to convince Vader anyways to turn away from the dark side. <laughs> So, you have accepted the truth. I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. I know there is good in you. Come with me. Obi-Wan once thought as you do. You don't know the power of the dark side. I must obey my master. I will not turn. Suit your feelings, father. You can't do this. I feel the conflict within you. Let go of your hate. It is too late for me, son. The Emperor will show you the true nature of the Force. He is your master now. Then my father is truly dead. Eventually we come to Vader and Luke's final battle, where Luke uses anger to stand a chance against his father, and this anger of course being something forbidden by the Jedi Code and the teachings of Obi-Wan and Yoda. Though these same people from the light side of the Force want Luke to kill his father the same as the evil Emperor does. 
which further motivates Luke to do what he thinks is right. And after Luke cuts down Vader, the Emperor begins to tell Luke that he isn't a Jedi and that he might as well be his new apprentice since he feels anger and uses it for power in combat, because he knows the conventional logic of the Jedi unlike Luke. The Jedi Council would have said the same thing to Anakin if they had known about his mass killing of the Sand People on Tatooine, which would have motivated Anakin even more in joining the dark side. Except Luke knows what he did doesn't prove him to be evil. He retaliated in anger because he cares for the safety of his friends, the rebellion, and for the good of his father. Because he loves them. Luke knows that emotion doesn't turn a Jedi to the darkness. It only makes the Jedi grow in knowledge. Love creates an understanding, and it binds everyone together, like the Force itself. Which goes back now to the Jedi Council. Luke becomes the true Jedi he was destined to be by defying the ancient teachings of the Jedi Council, and reforms the most powerful Dark Lord of the Sith to the light side of the Force, a feat thought to be completely impossible for thousands of years. So how can this concept that had such a presence in most of the prequel trilogy make sense if Luke contradicts it in the trilogy that finished nearly 16 years before this trilogy was even being written? And the answer to that question is simply because the Code and the Jedi Council were written to be wrong. And that's their whole purpose in this overall theme. Vader wasn't entirely manipulated by Palpatine to join the dark side. It was mostly his own decision. All his life he had to pick a side, and for him the dark side seemed the way to go. Though through seeing his son stand for something his younger self would have believed in long ago, he learns that this isn't the case. And it's through the Jedi Code that we find the importance of understanding the theme of individual point of view, which was something exemplified in Luke when he rebelled against his masters, and what was suppressed in Anakin, which eventually led him to turn to the dark side. And though it is only my opinion, I can say wholeheartedly that the entirety of the Star Wars saga is my favorite film series ever to be played in cinemas. And hopefully through the evidence I've provided here, people who don't share that same opinion as me can see where I come from. And because of that I put secretly in the title because the prequels just have too many negative aspects in them for them to be as respected as their predecessors because of things like their misled direction and several other things. Though hopefully through this video some positive aspects can be brought to light for some people, and I hope that recognition of a theme that has always been in the originals can finally be realized remarkably through the prequel story about corruption and the identity of what good and evil can really mean. Lucasfilm has created and delivered brilliant storytelling to the world for decades, and has inspired some of the greatest filmmakers of today, and will inspire some of the greatest filmmakers of the future. Whether that be from the stories of the prequels and the stories that have branched off from the prequels, or the originals that started it all and that we've all grown to love since all of those years ago. Luke, you're going to find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. Point of view? Point of view. Point of view!